Hey guys, if you're tired of shopping on Amazon and the big box stores for cheap quality landscape lighting, then go and check out lightingdoctor.ca where we only sell premium quality fixtures that we actually install and you can actually have the chance to go and test it and feel it for yourself with our try it before you buy it offer where you can get a premium quality landscape light at a discounted rate and go and test it out with a battery pack around your property Keep it for 14 days. If you love it, you get to keep it at the discounted rate. If not, you send it back for a full refund. And then you just have to buy the lights that you need after that. So go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It lights and see what a real premium quality landscape lighting picture should look like at lightingdoctor.ca. Hey, Sherry and Rob, thanks for sending the pictures here. Um, yeah, I'll give you a, a couple ideas um, to go with um, and how I would probably light this if this was a project that we were doing. But uh, my big focus would be to start with uh, this is start with the house and really feature that and then work on the landscape from there. Um, you got some cool things in the back. I'll talk to you some, my, some ideas about that and then you can kind of see what you like. But I think where I would start is on the house um, and just using some standard accent lights or up lights, um, I'll call them. Um, what I would do is I would definitely try and light these four pillars. So what I would do is I would try and uh, mount those in the ground fairly close to the house, maybe about 12 inches back and almost have them shining straight up on these two pillars. And then if you can kind of get it in the corner here, um, that kind of shines up to catch this pillar. And then again on this side here. Um, and then if there's room, you may want to put one down on that side too to catch this pillar as well. Um, I love doing the pillars like that, especially when they're white because they really stand out. Um, the angle of the light creates a nice light up top here too. Um, and it's probably one of the best features that you can have with landscape lighting. You've probably seen pictures um, of jobs like that where they've done that uh, and it always looks amazing. And then I would continue with that same light, kind of the same idea, but across the front of the house here. And I would probably try and get it kind of in between the shutters. So I would probably try and get one uh, again close to the house, uh, uplighting this shutter here kind of in between the window, in between the window, and then another one over here. Uh, and just create that nice balance of light across the whole front of the house, make it very uh, warm and inviting. And then it's really up to you whether you want to add some more path lights. I see you have a walkway here. So sometimes what we'll do, uh, although my recommendation is always start with less, you can always add on down the road. You may want to consider adding a couple path lights, um, but I think it's going to be a little tricky in certain areas because you more times than not, you don't want to stick them in the grass because you don't want to have to trim around them. But what I might do is if I have my accent light here, here, and here, I might try and do a path light here. I might try and do a path light here. And if that mulch bed continued or is close enough to the walkway, then you might want to consider that same theme here where you'd have a path light, a path light, and a path light. Uh, and it would do a nice job of, of also lighting uh, this pathway. But again, not something that you have to do, uh, just something you could add on if you wanted. I would also probably try and get some accent lights on. Um, it looks like there's a tree here on the corner uh, that I would try and accent because it would also uh, round out this balance on the front. Plus, it would start to highlight some landscape. So I would do that. And then I would also do the same on this side here because it just creates that nice balance across the whole front. Um, you may also want to consider, I would probably try and get an accent light on this guy here. Um, and again, from this angle, yes, you have a light back there and you have a light back here, then you have this one. Uh, but the thing to keep in mind is that you're always going to be viewing it from different angles. So as you're coming across the house this way, you're going to see this tree lit and you, it won't necessarily be, um, on the same lighting viewing angle, we'll call it as the house. So you're just creating different viewing angles and same thing with the trees on the corner. I might even try and place them a little bit more on the side, having them kind of shine this way again, because then it expands that viewing area around the, uh, around the front of the house. I would definitely also try and accent this, uh, larger tree here. Uh, this one, I would probably use two of those accent lights. I would probably try and get one on both sides again, because you're creating a viewing angle from the street, but you're also creating a nice viewing angle from, um, from the house side of things. Uh, so that kind of, I think, uh, balances out most of that. And I would probably stay with that on this lower level. Now, something you probably want to consider, and I would highly recommend because it's really going to make it stand out, is actually lighting these the second tier. And how we would do that um, is using very similar lights. Um, I would probably go to something more like this, which is a wash light, which has a wider angle and a little bit softer. And I would actually, sorry, I would actually mount those 
um, on the second tier. So how we do that is we have something called a gutter mount. Uh, basically just screws to the gutter and the fixture screws into that as opposed to like a ground stake. So I would probably, uh, at minimum, I would try and get one at least here on this side that's going to cover most of this. And I would try and get one on this tier here that at least gets this peak. Ideally, I would probably try and get one here that covers this bottom half and then kind of one up here that gets second peak. But I think if you even did just these two peaks would really uh, make a difference and really make it stand out. And what how you can do that is actually just running the wire up the gutter, making your connections in the gutter. They're all waterproof, so you can easily do that. Um, and it's actually quite simple to do. So that is kind of the front of the house. Um, I don't know if I would worry too much about this tree. I would just, I hate putting accent lights that close to a sidewalk and stuff because uh, very likelihood of getting kicked over or driven over or whatever it might be. So I would probably leave that one out. Um, and if this is on your property, you, I would definitely try and accent this the same as we did on this side, on both, uh, both sides of the tree. Uh, the only problem is getting wire there. If you can run it, um, say your transformers in the back and you can kind of run it around the driveway to this area, then I would try and get that one. Cause I think it would create that nice balance, especially with the other larger tree on the other side. Um, and then if we move to the back here, I think this is where maybe I'd focus a little bit more on the landscape, the patio and the sitting area. So, you know, in an area like this, um, I, I never want to put too much. Again, I'm always a fan of starting with less and you can add on more, but I think what I'd probably do is with that same wash light we talked about, um, again, because it, it's not going to shoot as high. So if you have, sorry, if you have any, um, taller trees, you're going to want to use an accent light, but if you have some lower stuff like this, a wash light is going to be really good. And what I would probably do is get a wash light at the base of this tree and highlight this one. And then I would probably try and get two in here that kind of highlight, um, these shrubs here. And I think that's probably where I would round it out. Um, if you wanted to add around the sitting area, you may want to add like a, one of the path and garden lights or path and area lights, um, like these guys here, uh, on, or maybe on the corners here. So maybe one in here and maybe one somewhere over here. Um, you just, you don't want to put them on the grass because then, like I said, you're trimming around them more likely to get hit with mowers and stuff. So, um, that's probably where I would leave this area unless you were to, uh, wanted to cut this back. You could also look at getting a wash light in here that kind of highlights this, but, um, I think it, most of that's going to get overgrown for most of the year. And we go to the rest of the yard. So the, so a couple different things you could do. Um, you don't have to do every one, but you might want to pick and choose with some accent lights. Like we talked about, the only difference is I would increase the intensity. This is, um, a, basically about a four and a half watt led bulb or what they would call a 20 watt equivalent halogen for those larger trees in the back. You'd probably want to bump that up to a 35 watt equivalent, uh, halogen lamp or a, um, or a 50 watt equivalent. Um, it's all led, but it would just be a lot brighter because you're going to need to push that light that much farther up the tree. So uh, again, if this was a project I was doing, I would probably pick and choose some of these larger trees. Like I might try and put one in here um, that shines up that tree. And then, you know, a couple of these. So again, with these ones, there's two things you could do. Um, you could have your accent light at the base that shines up the tree, maybe on like two different sides. And then a couple path lights in here which would be kind of cool because then you're up lighting some trees and you have some really subtle path lighting that, that highlights this walkway. Another thing you can do is actually mounting the lights. Um, and I'll go back to that is actually mounting the lights above. So, uh, with these same lights, we have something, uh, it's basically a tree mount stake. It's this guy here. And basically what it is, is it's a giant screw that screws into the tree and then the fixture screws into here so that you can actually easily mount the lights up here and have them shining down. And why I like doing that sometimes is because it creates that moonlight effect um, that you might hear of sometimes. And it makes it seem as if you have a full moon uh, for most of the night. The other thing too, is it's a lot of times it's a little more work to get it up, but it's a lot more cost effective because what you can do with one or two lights up here and have them shining down on the pathway, uh, you can eliminate a lot of path lights where an area like this, you might have six to eight path lights. Well, now you can maybe have, you know, four, um, four accent lights shining down and it'll probably do a better job of covering this area. But again, it's just, the, it's all preference. I think, uh, both ways look good. Um, I think you either do the, uh, the down lighting on the pathway on a couple of these trees, or you accent light, um, kind of like the entrances 
of the walkway. You have the path lights down the middle um, spread. You know, roughly it's probably a pretty dark area. So I'd say you can probably spread them about 10 to 12 feet apart. I would try and stagger them on both sides. And then on this side, you may want to accent. Again, if we look at the fire pit area, um, you may want to just accent some big, big trees like this, like this one, like this one like this one and just kind of surround that area uh, and create that perimeter lighting. Cause anytime you use the perimeter lighting, what that does also is it makes the whole area um, look that much bigger because you create that, that perimeter of light. So two trains of thought, two ways you kind of go about doing that back area. And then same thing in here, like I kind of talked about, I think this is the tree that I had talked about um, and that goes to the fire pit area. So I probably would try and get a big accent light uh, up here. Um, and I would start with that. You can always add some path lights, you know, in here, in here, and in here to kind of help light some of this walkway if you'd like. Um, but again, I always suggest start with the big features and then you can you can add that stuff on later. The path lights don't use a lot of power. Um, so if you just plan for that uh, right size transformer and, and leaving a little extra wire, then you can easily do that later. So I know it's a longer video, but you guys have a great property here. So I wanted to touch base on all the points. Please let me know if you have any questions and if you want us to customize a kit for you, um, just kind of send me some quantities based on those ideas of what you think and we can put everything together for you. All right. Thanks guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. I hope you guys got some great tips and I hope you guys take advantage of your own free video consultation where you can send me a few pictures of your property and I'm gonna get back to you with your own personalized video pre presentation with all kinds of tips and tools on how to go and light your own property. So to get that, go check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or just email me a few pictures of your property at cal at lightingdoctor.ca.